Good evening and welcome to Have a Seat with Chris Hansen. Tonight, an interview that I'm very, very excited about. It's with Deputy Royce James, who's with the Volusia County, Florida Sheriff's Department. And if you've been watching any news over the past few days, you've probably seen the story of Deputy Royce James and how he got wind on his shift that a 13-year-old girl was missing after school, and it turns out that she was the victim of a child predator. The diligence that this lawman showed in tracking this young woman down and rescuing her and bringing the predator to justice is very impressive, and so it is that I wanted to have the deputy on this show. As you know, we do the predator stories and investigations all the time and have for 17 years this month. It's been since we did our very first to catch a predator. Deputy James, thanks so much for being with us. How are you today? I'm doing well, thank you. Is this the first case like this you've encountered or have you seen others like it? I've seen others, but personally, yeah, this is the first for me. Tell me what happened. How did you first get this call or complaint and, and what did you know when you went into it? Give me a sense for the, the start of your shift and how you first learned about this case. Yeah, the call actually came out right at the start of my shift. Um, I was working an off-duty shift in a different part of uh, in our south end of our county. Uh, the call simply came in quite innocently as a missing juvenile. Uh, we get we get these uh, quite frequently. Um, typically, the juveniles, uh, you know, sometimes they're habitual runaways or they're having behavioral issues or they just got into an argument with their parents. Uh, this one was none of that. Um, never ran away, no behavioral issues, good student, good kid. So that's the first thing that that struck me as odd because this is this is very atypical of this kid. So that's what kind of got my antenna up going for the at, at the at the initial start of the call. And what did you know about the the missing girl from the get go? Thirteen years old, and what else? Yeah, just turned thirteen. Again, no behavioral issues, no fights with her parents, never ran away. Just it was just very atypical. Ever it was it was not unusual for her to do this. So that was that was very strange. So. I dug a little deeper and contacted one of her friends at school who said she was planning on, she made mention earlier that day at school, she made mention she was going to meet a guy friend of hers who was going to pick her up and they were going to have a sleepover at a local hotel. A guy friend with whom she was going to have a sleepover at a local hotel. Yeah, at some hotel. Me thinking if he's able to drive and he's able to rent a hotel, he's probably over 18. And since she's 13, that really got me concerned. Now, uh, you have daughters yourself. Yes. My youngest daughter is 18, but I, I remember them being 12 and 13 years old. They're innocent. They don't really know much better. And did you have any sense of how she may have gotten in contact with this quote unquote friend with whom she was going to have the overnight sleepover? Um, uh, did you know anything about this fellow? Not at the time. I didn't know how they communicated or, or where this all started. Uh, after interviewing, uh, the juvenile's friend, the only information I gathered was he was possibly out of Orlando and his name possibly started with a T possibly a T. Tyler, but she didn't know. So I didn't have much to go on. So you start your shift. You've got a list of things. You've got a a number of duties. And where do you prioritize this? Given the circumstances, this was at the top of my priority. Um, I really didn't have anything higher priority than this at all. So I decided to dedicate my shift to this until I exhausted everything I could. Describe um, Volusia County or the part that you patrol for me. Uh, are there a lot of these hotels where this girl and this fellow could have been? This the area I was working in this particular day isn't an area I normally work. We're normally assigned to a certain area of the county. This was actually my day off and I was working overtime in a different part of the county because they needed help with um, patrol. Got it. And, and how would you describe that area, if you would? It's the very south end of our county. It's the uh, Oak Hill Edgewater area. It's the very southernmost cities in our county on the Got east it. side of the county. And generally, is it a pretty safe area? Is it residential? Yeah, generally not, uh, to be honest with you, not typically not much goes on in this area at all. Okay. You were wearing a body cam, as many law enforcement officers do across the country, and, and, and much of what you did is, is recorded. So I want to take a look at this 
four or five minute uh, video that the sheriff's department has put together and then we'll come back and talk about it all let's take a look basically i'm missing a um a juvenile left school and um possibly was picked up by a guy here I, i'm kind of wanting to get an idea of who he is and i'm looking at today from school gets out around 3 15 ish so i'm thinking 3 to 3 30. i mean is that like a super super recent picture though? she says she looks pretty much like this it, might, it looks pretty close to her I can, yeah, I can see, hold on, let me see if there's any other angles out there that can get a better day. Hello, um, hey, so my name is uh, Deputy James. I'm wondering if um, a juvenile and an, uh, another person checked in here earlier today. I haven't Have you seen that? Her? No, she would have been here with an unknown, probably male. Hello. Hi, how are you? I'm looking for a juvenile that looks to be ran away from home today. Okay. And we have information she may have checked in to a local hotel with an adult. Um, this is what she looks like. Um, any check ins today? Only one check in before I came in. I'm investigating a um a runaway juvenile okay that supposedly checked into a local hotel okay. today with an adult most likely i don't know what he looks like or anything um this is what she looks like all right someone checked in earlier when i, uh, when I wasn't here so let me check out oh perfect okay, okay. Is there a name to that yeah name? well her she's only 13 so I, I don't know the person she's with so it would have been whoever she's with yeah, she doesn't even have an ID. She's, again, only 13. Do you know who she's an older person, or do you have no idea? Uh, the, the person she's with? No clue. Well, check out this, this person that checked in today. Ooh, where's this guy? I think this is him. They said his name started with a T, possibly Tyler. Front office, anybody inside? We need to come in for a second. Hey. Sheriff's office, back up. Have a seat on the couch. Where's the What's up, sweetheart? Sheriff's office. Get Pappy up here. Go in the bedroom and wait for me for a second. How old are you? Five. How old are you? Okay. Five one tech. Just wait in there for me, sweetheart. Okay? Are you okay? Do you need any attention? Are you hurt at all? You're not hurt at all. Your stomach hurts. Okay, we're gonna be right with you. Okay. Three, three, five. Yeah, you up. How old are you? If I ask you that question again, I'm going to lose my f***ing mind. How old are you? 22. Oh, you f***ed up. Yeah, you f***ed up real good. Yeah, I'm not Yes, I am. I found him. Yeah, boy. How old is he? Too old. Alright, I'm on the way. Copy. You sure you're okay, sweetheart? Okay. You walk into the first hotel and basically level with the clerk saying, hey, I'm looking for a girl. She may be in trouble. <laughs> what can you tell me? And what does that clerk tell you? Well, I kind of prefaced the clerk and what I'm looking for. Um, initially, what led me to the hotel is I, I initially went to a, a local Dollar General because that's where the juvenile was known to go after school. To add credibility to it, I watched the video and sure enough, she walks in. Now, she does have a cell phone, but it only works on Wi-Fi. 
the second I see her walk into the Dollar General on camera, I see the cell phone comes out and she instantly starts texting. I watch her for about 40 or 45 minutes in the Dollar General. And this is on the video, the security video from the Dollar General. Correct, correct. And so they give that up right away. So you're at the Dollar General, you're watching this video for 45, 40, 45 minutes and, and you see her texting, but you know she doesn't have cell service, she just got the wireless from the store. Right, so I, I, uh, I asked the manager, do they have Wi-Fi and is it open to the public? And she says, yeah. So I'm assuming this juvenile is talking to somebody. Uh, she's in there for 45 minutes. The clerk does ask her, is she okay? Because it's unusual for a juvenile to be waiting in Dollar General for 45 minutes. And she does say, I'm waiting for a ride. So then I got extremely concerned. Um, I was hoping he was going to come in. The Dollar General doesn't have security camera footage outside, just on the inside. So I was hoping he'd come in so I can get more information other than he's out of Orlando and his name starts with a T. Unfortunately, he didn't. Uh, after about 45 minutes, I see her walk out and leave. Um, at that point, I went to my patrol car. I Googled all the hotels in the area and simply just started going through them one by one. How many did you go through until you got to the hotel where these two were at? Three. Three. I went to the hotels with a photo of her. I did tell the clerk this because at this point, I'm, I'm a couple of hours into this. So I did tell the clerk, it's quite possible you weren't even on duty when she arrived. Also, if he had already rented the hotel room, it's quite possible they just went straight to the hotel room and she would have never been seen at all. So to add to the, providing the photo of her, I went through all of the check-ins of that day one by one. I am kind of got a somewhat picture of the, who I'm looking for. He's at least 18. I didn't get the feeling he was an elderly person. So I'm looking for a younger male. The first two hotels just had, you know, families, uh, husband and wife, nothing really fit until I reached the third hotel. When I reached the third hotel, um, that's what I got. I got lucky and found them. And what was the sense of urgency here? You're racing the clock in a way, uh, as we Absolutely. know, whenever there's a missing child, the first few hours are, are critical mm -hmm. and that had to be weighing heavy on you, I would imagine. It did. It did. Definitely. And you get to the third hotel and we saw this on the body cam video, but they're pretty cooperative. They're not, they're not holding back. Uh, no, um, we typically, when we're working things like this, it's, it's extremely rare we come across somebody that's not going to be cooperative, especially given the circumstances of missing juvenile possibly in their hotel it's probably in their best interest to cooperate because this is this is a potentially very serious. When did you know that this was it? Did you know before you knocked on that door of that room, or wasn't was it not until you actually came in and saw this guy face to face? I fell with a very high probability this was it. Uh, the second I looked at his driver's license, uh, when I looked at his license, his first name was Tyler. That fits. His address was out of Orlando. That fits. The chances of a 22-year-old male from Orlando named Tyler in, in that part of the county is insanely rare. It's very coincidental. Um, so I felt with a very high probability that was him, but I knew for certainty when I knocked on the door. When I first knocked on the door, I didn't announce myself as a sheriff's office. I announced myself as a front desk not to alarm him. Uh, as soon as the door opened, uh, I put my foot in the door jam so he couldn't slam it in my face. And the second he realized I was a deputy, his body language told me I was in the right place. At that point, I knew for a fact she, I was in the right place. Describe his body language. Shock and awe. Uh, he was expecting to open the door to see, you know, a uh, clerk of the hotel. The second he uh, saw my uniform and I said, sheriff's office, uh, he turned white as a ghost and uh, immediately backed up and I told him to go sit on the couch. Um, he started putting his hands in his, started putting his head in his hands. So uh, I knew I knew at that point I had found her. I actually um, asked where she was by name. She heard my name from the bedroom, looked out, and once she saw it was a deputy there, she came running to me and, um, and uh, gave me a hug. It's hard to see the girl in the video, and obviously we're not identifying her or showing her face for, for the obvious reasons, but describe what you saw in this girl, this 13-year-old. 
I saw her body language told me uh, she had somehow gotten into a situation that was a little over her head that was unexpected. And she was, in short, insanely grateful to see me. Um, she's, later on, she told me she knew I was there and knew I was there to help her and get her out of there. Did she appear to be held against her will? No, I wouldn't say that. Um, just an innocent kid who got into something they just weren't, didn't have the social maturity to, to handle. And how was she dressed? Um, night clothes, just regular clothing, nothing, nothing crazy. You turn your attention back to this 22 year old named Tyler mm -hmm. and he doesn't immediately give it up. Does he? No, he, uh, at that point, uh, he, you can see he realized that he's in some serious trouble. Um, I had some verbal dialogue with him to set some expectations of what, how this is going to go, or this day, this bad day is going to become a lot worse for him. You were not playing. I was not playing around with him, <laughs> no, sir. You know, I get asked all the time on the predator investigations, and we just did a, uh, some new ones a few weeks ago here in, uh, in Michigan and Genesee County with the sheriffs. You know, do you ever get angry? Do you ever want to? you know, strike out at these guys? And the answer is, of course, yes, but, you know, you're professional about it and you have even a, a bigger responsibility as a sworn law enforcement officer there. But you made it clear and you see this on the body cam that, that you weren't going to ask a third time. No. Um, and there was even some off. It was there were obviously the whole video is very long, but there was right. a couple of more incidents where we're, we're making sure he understands uh, we're not we're not in short. We're not messing around with him. It's right. a huge mistake. Uh, this this is a bad day for him. It can get worse still. So uh, we expect his cooperation to to the fullest. And he does cooperate, as we see on the video. But does he give you a statement? Does he say anything to you? Does he explain what happened and what he did and why? No, not to me. Um, after I found her, of course, I need to get detectives there. I need to get Department of Children and Families there. So we kind of held what we had until other resources started arriving. And quite honestly, Chris, I decided to return my attention to her, let them take over that part of it and um, just, just, just deal with her. She was, she pretty much imprinted on me and just wouldn't leave my side through the duration of, of this whole thing. So I decided just to turn my attention to her and let the detectives do their job. So was she anything to me? Was she, was she physically harmed? No, she, she was fine. Okay. Had you not interrupted this quote unquote sleepover when you did, what do you think would have happened? I wonder about that all the time. And I, being in law enforcement, my mind wanders to the basics all the way to maybe he would have realized the mistakes he, maybe he would have realized how serious what he has done. And maybe we would have never even seen her again. Um, anywhere in that gambit of things could have happened. Um, uh, we don't know. I'm glad we will never know because I found her, but who knows what we would have, um, what we would have encountered. What did the 13 year old girl say to you? Uh, if you recall, I really didn't talk with her very much about the incident due to legal reasons or certain legal reasons with us interviewing juveniles. We, we only have a certain amount and I didn't want to waste one. So I just made sure she was safe. I entertained her. Once she realized she was safe, I got to see her normal personality, and um, it was she was vibrant, intelligent, articulate, just a really, really, really good kid. And um, her and I just spent a good time together, you know, hanging out. She did thank me several times for saving her, which got me very emotional. Um, but I didn't really talk with her in in depth directly about what happened. I was saving that for the detectives and everything. At one point, you went back to your uh, patrol car and, and had a moment. I did. I did. She, um, it was seeing her great personality, knowing the serious situation she was just in, that combined with her thanking me several times for helping her, for coming to get her, for saving her, for finding her. It, it, it got me emotional. What does it say that a 13-year-old girl like this with no history of trouble could find themselves so far in over their heads here? 
it tells me she's it tells me she's just she's a I mean, like many young kids they just they see the world differently than adults who know the dangers that are out there they're innocent they really don't know any better it's just they're just naive it's not necessarily their fault it's just they're just they're just naive they see the world differently than how we do and there are people out there looking to exploit that do we know how this guy made the approach online? What social media platform? Anything like that? That we don't. Um, I I'm sure that's been discovered at this point. I do not know how they initially met, but once I do know they initially met on some form of social media, and then it then it moved over to like more comfortable means such as text messaging and things like that. So I, I don't know how it initially got started at this point. So. Does it worry you as a law enforcement officer that there are so many social media platforms today and so many ways that an adult can contact a child? And then we have this added uh, aspect of being in a pandemic where kids are spending all their time online. Parents are busy doing all their work online. And even though they might be in the same home, a lot of the time they're separated in terms of any sort of monitoring. And it just creates, at least in my view, uh, more opportunity than ever before for a predator to approach a, a child, as you saw in this case. Yeah, it does. Um, all of these different apps, different social media, it really has making the world a small place. Anybody can talk to anybody at any given time, 24 hours a day, and many different avenues. So it's it's hard to keep track of it. It is a lot. Yeah. In terms of everything you'll do this month, where does this rank? this ranks at the top of the things I will do probably this, this year. Um, it's a, it's a very rare circumstance I was put in. Um, typically in my experience with law enforcement, we find out these things well after the fact, and then we have to backtrack to piece all of this together because she only knew him by his first name. So if I wouldn't have found her, even if she would have said what happened when she arrived home, if she would have arrived home, we would have had to put all the pieces together. And, you know, we're well behind the eight ball at this point. And how many other victims could have been victimized while we're while we're piecing all of this together? So and this is definitely the top top things is, that's happened to me. You also have to wonder how many times has this fellow Tyler done this before? Absolutely. This likely isn't his first. Right. If, if you're, and I, I thought of that, if you're this comfortable to travel from Orlando to Volusia, Florida, rent a hotel, I mean, you're, you're, this, it takes a comfort level that tells me you've probably done this before. This doesn't strike me as this is your first time, just, just because of the comfort level and all of the things he went through. So not only did you save this 13 year old girl, you potentially prevented this from happening however many times in the future. If he's willing to do what he did that day, I have no doubt in my mind, if he wouldn't have been caught this time, there'd be 100% chance of him doing this again. Because I can, I can see in his mind, however crazy it may seem, I did this, I got away with it. This is in his mind, this is somehow okay. And it's, it's not. So I have no doubt this would have happened again. What's the lesson here for other sheriff's deputies and police officers around the country? Um, a couple of lessons. One, um, it reinforces the importance of our job and how serious the nature in which we can affect our community. It uh, reminds us these things do happen. They will happen again. So be vigilant in your, your research and what seems to be a routine call. Also, for the um, deputies out there that somehow make light of it or maybe not want to go the extra mile it shows what a responsibility we have as law enforcement to keep going in our investigation until everything's exhausted i told my colleagues a lot of them are saying this is a good job because i found her in my opinion it's a good job even if i didn't find her went to the dollar general you go through different hotels you're exhausting everything you can so that when she is found you can show you did everything you could in your power to find this particular person. So there's a lot of lessons to be learned here. It's not lost on me also because I spend, you know, so much time, you know, actually based in New York, but also in Detroit and a lot of time in LA that, 
you know, you hear defund the police and, you know, there's, there's a lot of tension and anxiety now for a lot of different reasons with law enforcement and citizens across the country, maybe less so in Volusia County, Florida, but it's good to see the good guys get a point on the board, isn't it? It is. It is. It's, it's greatly appreciated. And what do you say to parents? To parents, I would say, um, Pay attention to what your children are doing a little bit more. There's nothing stopping you. I mean, you're their parent. You're you're essentially their personal police officer. You can look at their phones, monitor what they're doing, who are they talking to. Obviously, there's going to be some kids that do things behind their kids' back. At some point, we all did it to some extent. So for those circumstances, educate your children and what could happen out there. Educate them on red flags, on clues, on that they're they're probably being victimized. So when they when those off chances are they are doing something behind your back, they recognize that they are about to be a victim of something, and you you empower them with the education to act accordingly. Um, there's plenty of tracking devices on phones, which will enable me to find her much sooner. So there, there's a lot of things that, that parents can take the um, take the initiative on and on helping to make sure this doesn't happen. And that raises an interesting question. A lot of parents are fearful of having that device activated because it's snooping. But the reality is, had that feature been activated, you would have found her a lot quicker than you did. I would have, I would have, I would have found her nearly immediately. And I, I disagree. It, when my children are minors, there's no snooping. You you are my property until you are 18. There's no I, happen to, I happen to agree with you on that. Yeah. There's no snooping. There's no, this is my room. This is my phone. No, you, you have literally nothing. It's all provided by me, and I will do whatever I want to do with it. And if you don't like it, tough. That, that's, that's part of growing up. So, <clears throat> Well, listen, I appreciate you very much taking time out of your uh, day. I know you've got to hit the shift soon. Anything else you want folks to know about this case or anything else going on down in uh, Volusia County, Florida? No, that's about it. All right. You stay safe, stay healthy, and I'll keep in touch with you, I promise, okay? I will. Take care. All right, Deputy. Thanks so much. And thank you for joining this edition of Have a Seat with Chris Hansen. What a great guy. And and I know, and we've covered these stories here on the uh, on the channel about the George Floyd case and so many other things going on in the protests in New York and, and around the country. But, uh, you know, here's a guy who went the extra mile and I've been covering law enforcement for 40 years, literally. And, and I know uh, men and women in law enforcement at all levels across the world, literally. And, and, you know, this, this, this guy did it. He went the extra mile and uh, saved a young girl because of it. So think about all that. And I will see you very soon right here. In the meantime, uh, check out the podcast, Predators I've Caught. We're on episode five now and quickly moving towards episode six. The two new series on um, Discovery Plus, so Onision in real life. We'll have a fourth episode of that coming up very soon. And the Unseemly series, the investigation into Peter Nygaard. Uh, you've heard some about that uh, here. And check out the four Part series on Discovery Plus as well. It's it's chilling and important to see. You take care and remember, I'll be watching.